What's going on there, folks? Good morning. It is the Earth Master here on this finally Friday. Welcome to the end of the weekend, or end of the weekend, end of the work week. Weekend beginning here. Uh, it is Friday, February 17th, 2023. It's about 8.04 p.m. here along the West Coast in California. And uh, latest quake there on the globe shows some movement into Northern California. Uh, 2.5, the latest there. Looks like at the southern end of the uh, Cascadia. Notice up north there, had a 4.6 up there, north of the, uh, looks like the Explorer plate. Let's go ahead and check this out here real quick and uh, see what we have going on across the area. There is that 2.6. Now, this is a little odd one here. Haven't really seen too much activity specifically along this northern segment here of the San Andreas Fault. A little odd. Uh, either way, some activity kicking up here. Pretty shallow. Looks like we got uh, two recorded earthquakes. I want to see what's going on here. So there is the signature from that earthquake uh, near Dinsmore. Dinsmore actually uh, sits over here to the east a little bit, northeast, right off in this direction. And that signature... Uh, definitely looks like two earthquakes, maybe more in there. <laughs> that may be like a triple tap uh, earthquake. I'll have to see how this, uh, see how they sort it out. Either way, a little bit of activity ramping up here today in Northern California and the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. This has definitely been uh, a key interest here lately in terms of earthquake uptick. Uh, we did see some movement yesterday and also this morning too a 3.2 18 kilometers deep um just north of the activity that's kicking up uh, as we speak uh, down south here so things kind of uh remaining elevated along the cascadia subduction zone now up north here i uh, got some movement onto the explorer plate the explorer plate is going to be this uh it's a very small microplate uh, that sits roughly about this line here imaginary line northward and it's all part of not really technically a whole part but they call this whole section um the juan de fuca plate but in general there's uh three separate small microplates either way uh this whole area is being shoved underneath the north american plate here to the east and this red line that uh, extends right about the queen charlotte sound southward in the northern california where we're seeing the activity here today uh, is the Cascadia Mega uh, Thrust Area that's uh, very capable of producing a, a 9.0 or greater earthquake. Um, it has historically many, many times. It's all been documented. And, uh, it's, well, last one was back in 1700, so we got a little bit of time that's been built up there. 4.6, just shy of the Cascadia uh, subduction zone, the northern end. That's in the Gorda Plate, kind of about the middle out there little odd activity there in the uh, Cascadia today. All right, let's see what else we got here. Further down south, I'm checking my earthquake rock, seeing if it's moving or not. I don't see it. Um, Ridgecrest area and also a little bit of activity <clears throat> stretching down into the uh, Santa Clarita area, it looks like. Uh, some small microquakes within the last hour. And uh, does, I don't see any major swarms kicking off around the southern end of the San Andreas Fault for now. That would be the section right around here. Uh, this plate boundary. Things look uh, fairly calm there for now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Most of this activity here from yesterday. But uh, we will check out the seismographs here. Just, just for verification, right? Because a lot of times on a Friday and the weekends, they don't put up earthquakes on the USGS map. Uh, looks like uh, overnight, just a couple handful of small microquakes across the area. Nothing major going on there at uh, Yellowstone National Park. And the rest of the country out there, the rest of the states look fairly quiet. Uh, the Caribbean plate as well. we got one further earthquake just north of the Puerto Rico Trench. A little odd up here. 4.5, 10 kilometers deep. And uh, South America looks pretty darn quiet what we have here for uh some of the smaller quakes 
Yeah, relatively uh, calmer conditions out here across this area today. Down into the New Zealand area and the Kermadec Trench still looks fairly active. Uh, we did see some further movement overnight. Looks like a 4.5 along the Kermadec Trench here, 10 kilometers deep, and some activity into uh, New Zealand. Let's, uh, let's check that out here real quick with the GeoNet servers. And a couple hours ago, we got some twos and threes. Seeing if there's anything of large scale activity. There's that 4.5 an hour ago. Uh, so it's a, somewhat of a newer quake there, 278 kilometers deep into the uh, Kermadec Trench here, north of North Island. Uh, there's some of those twos and ones. Here's a 2.9 about two hours ago. Kind of looks like it's centered around the uh, Taupo Super Volcano. So let's see what we got going on out there, folks. Volcanic drums is something really cool to look at uh, uh, when it comes to seismic activity. I'm not for sure what this is up here. I was just looking at this uh, reading, not necessarily seeing that show up on uh, any of the other stations all that prominent anyway. I don't know if it's wind or, or what. Uh, as far as earthquake activity goes, Taupo Super Volcano right here. A couple very small earthquakes, but that's about it. Nothing major going on across the uh, volcanic drums here. And a quick glance here at the earthquake drums. Across New Zealand and South Island area well uh, let's see there's a couple earthquakes here that's gonna be uh, those twos I'm just trying to find that 4.5 uh, that kicked off earlier and then again that one up on the Kermadec Trench may not show up across the North Island uh, but that activity last night in the South Island definitely did and uh, more prominent as you got closer here to the epicenter of the quakes but for now no uh, major activity taking place there across new zealand still want to be on guard and watch out here due to all the heightened activity over the last couple days uh, across areas of the indonesia region we did see a 6.1 earthquake come in about one o'clock this morning 38 kilometers deep just uh, shy of the Banda Sea, there's a little plate boundary here near the Weber Basin uh, that does see some large earthquakes out here. Uh, but for now, we got a 6.1. And up on the northern northwestern edge here of the Philippine Plate, uh, things look like they're kind of kicking up here a little bit uh, overnight and yesterday with some fours and twos. Uh, fours and a five. There we go. <laughs> Fours and twos. There might be some twos in there. Let's double check here with the uh, EMSC model. And it looks like uh, mostly fours and fives. Some smaller quakes down south around the uh, Maluka Sea area and a 3.9 Java Trench. Got a pretty deep earthquake right here, though, that 4.2. Look at this. This one is, uh, that is deep. And that was the late, latest one here. 449 kilometers deep for that 4.2 into the Izu Trench. That's this uh, major subduction zone that sits off here. Uh, so activity over the past 24, 36 hours has been confined roughly around the western side of this plate with that general movement here that kind of shoots off. Um, a general plate movement here is to the west. Uh, that ultimately looks like it has allowed some further strain and pressure to build up downstream into these deeper areas of the trenches. So uh, definitely have to pay attention to the movement upstream here that we could see today. Uh, that includes uh, Izu Trench, Mariana Trench, potentially the Japan area as well, but upstream regions uh, above that uh, 449 kilometer level. Kurokamchaka Trench, deep earthquake there, and our right smack dab in our watch zone for the mega quake. 4.8, uh, 143 kilometers deep. Alaska area, much quieter today, it looks like. Uh, we did see a little bit of movement yesterday across the Aleutian Trench. Today, uh, some older movement down south is noted, and a little bit of activity across the Denali 
Cook Inlet area and uh, around the Anchorage region. A big island out here lighting up a little bit. Did have uh, one odd earthquake up north. 2.3, uh, looks like 3.5 kilometers deep, relatively shallow north of Mauna Kea. I uh, don't believe that's associated with that volcano. Just a little bit of activity there. Um, just off the uh, off the highway here. And a movement down into the Pahala area as well. One earthquake. Uh, is there one or is there a couple? It looks like just one. This one here, uh, relatively shallow. 2.1 at the southeastern flank here of Mauna Loa. Uh, I don't think there's anything major to uh, chat about there, but we will double check the uh, volcano hazards for Mauna Loa and uh, see if there's any new updates across the area of Mauna Loa. Kilauea, of course, is still um, continuing to erupt. Let's see if I can get this in here a little bit. Mauna Loa. All right, let's see what we have. Latest update was put out on the 16th, so that was um, yesterday. Come on, what's going on with my mouse today? There we go. Uh, let's see here. No active lava within the caldera, nor either rift zone. Uh, looks like the entire 2022 field from last year, the eruption, the flow field is cooling and no longer active, obviously. Uh, seismic activity remains low and there's no detectable tremor which is associated with the lava movement or magma movement below. Uh, deformation rates show inflation somewhat above background levels uh, but this is not uncommon following eruptions. All right. So either way a little bit of uh, inflation out there and some seismic activity kicking up around the Mauna Loa area today on the Big Island. All right. Uh, shooting westward. Turkey area, uh, looks like we did see one more earthquake up into the Romania area last night, 4.5. Nothing above 4.0 here since yesterday afternoon in Turkey, uh, but I know they're still having some earthquakes. Uh, looks like uh, some twos and threes here according to the EMSC model. I think I even see a, a somewhat of a recent 4.4 in there, uh, but general seismic activity confined to these regions here today. I'm not seeing any unusual uh, migration. Uh, Tanzania down here has been having a little bit of activity uh, further south, much further south. Two earthquakes, uh, including one just after midnight there, 4.9. Things uh, getting a little bit on the larger side out here. Uh, historical data for this region does show it uh, within some areas that do see uh, some earthquakes historically. And most of these look like they could be uh, between 4.5 and 5.0 to maybe 6.0 in some of these areas around this uh, around the country. Atlantic Ocean, one earthquake from yesterday in the divergent boundary out here, the central mid-Atlantic Ridge. Nothing else showing up here across the area. See if we got any more quakes here on this uh, seismograph. Nope. Just those uh, couple that came in just really quick. And uh, again, it's in a, a little odd area. Uh, of course, this is a plate boundary, but it, it's been a while since I've seen any activity here specifically on this northern segment of the uh, San Andreas Fault. Continue to watch that. All right. Uh, what else we have here across the area? Uh, we checked out Yellowstone, space weather could be uh, getting interesting here tonight. Uh, we'll be covering this completely um, in our update later this uh, afternoon. I got quite a few things I got to do early this morning, hence why I'm up uh, doing an update a little bit sooner. Got some schoolwork and uh, some other things I got to get done here over the next few hours. But uh, yeah, G2 storm is expected, forecasted. Uh, and that means that we could see auroras down into uh, the northern tier states and areas such as uh, maybe extreme northern Oregon, Idaho, uh, maybe northern Nebraska. 
Uh, there's a little, there's a, definitely a possibility if you look on the northern, far northern horizon in those areas, pending you have clear skies, uh, you'll be able to see that. Because uh, there is an aurora watch in effect. Uh, that was from a partial halo CME observed. And I believe that was directly um, uh, facing Earth at the time. Visible uh, Visual auroras has already been reported across many locations at higher latitudes the past few nights following an earlier CME passage on Wednesday. Beautiful photo there um, in Alberta. That's, uh, that's on my bucket list. In fact, I think I had a dream about that last night, seeing the auroras. Uh, one of these days, it won't be a dream. I, I would love to see that in person. Not even joking. Not even joking. So, all right, tonight, we'll watch for that. Uh, and we'll do, a, again, a little bit further update uh, this afternoon with regards to that uh, potential. As far as solar flare activity goes, we are watching 3229 as we get a little bit visual, a little bit more uh, perspective there of what it looks like. These other sunspots, oh, this one here is kind of growing a little bit as it's starting to turn away from Earth. Looking a little bit more dynamic with the intermixing of the fields. And this one here is still kind of iffy. But uh, we'll watch this sunspot here. Again, that is newly named sunspot 3229 as it uh, rotates into view. And a little bit more lined up with the Earth in the coming days. Uh, overall threat right now for flaring activity, 90% chance for a C flare, 20% chance for an M flare, 1% or less for an X flare. And uh, that's that's going to be it. So have a good day, folks. We will catch you guys back here um, again a little bit later this afternoon. Once I get everything done and caught up, then we'll cover that uh, that solar update in more detail. Have a good one. Stay safe out there. And we'll catch you guys back here soon. Have a good one.